Sorry, are you are you okay? Do you need a tissue or anything? Oh, am I bothering you? <laughs> Allergy season, you know. <laughs> um, I'm I'm good though. Yeah, I don't need Kleenex. Okay. <sighs> All right then. Good luck. <coughs> Sir, I, sorry, I gotta say something. You sound like a human garbage disposal. Everyone here is annoyed by you. These are noise canceling earbuds. How can I still hear you? Think about that. All right. Get out of here. Go sniff some pollen. Ah, <sighs> uh, excuse me, Jake. Sorry. Doesn't get easier to listen to. <laughs> oh, I had a real problem. My allergies have subsided. Glad to say I had a real issue last week. I, I just got back from LA. On the flight to LA, I'm I'm full blown in it, right? It's kind of, a, I'm getting on the plane, I'm nervous. I mean, what's gonna happen up in the vestibule? I'm sneezing, eyes are watering, I gotta wear a mask. Yeah, I, I've tried the sneeze in a mask. It just really shouldn't be done. It'll ruin your day. Oh, it's disgusting. So I'm trying to play this game. You know, I got my noise canceling air earphones on not to brag and so i'm i guess i'm not aware that i'm i'm probably doing quite a bit of sniffling yeah get off the flight long flight and it's fun it's fun because the airpods have the transparency mode right where you mm -hmm. can hear people don't think you can hear but you can and the people i sat next to the whole flight i start to hear them go oh sniffling fool <laughs> you this dude and they're like he got a skirt on too and i had my like jacket tied around my waist it's like oh. this dude yeah kleenex boy you need a kleenex skirt boy and I'm just walking scared to death. I'm like, they don't know I can hear, but I can hear. And they're uh, like, that Rona's still going around. Go clean your, clean your nose out. And there's talking trash as they walk by me. They don't know I can hear. And I was just like, wait, this da, is da, a da, real da, da, story. Da, da, da. Yeah. You are saying this to I you? was so scared. <laughs> they they were, called you sniffling boy. Yeah. All sorts of crazy making stuff. Making fun of you wearing a skirt. I can't believe this is real. What? I, I couldn't either. When it, the, well, the, it started where I was sitting in my seat and you know, the, the classic, like everyone getting up. And I, I go out of my way to be, I'm going to be the fastest guy ever to get up and get my stuff. Yeah, yeah, take pride in it. so annoying when people take their time. Yeah. So I'm up, boom, boom. But as I'm going, they're like, hurry up. Oh. And I just get one of those. I'm like, are they, are they talking to me? Sure they're not. And I start walking out here. Hey, this fool's got a skirt on too. <laughs> and I, I have tied around my waist. I'm like, I can see how they could think that, but I don't. <laughs> and then as I keep walking, I just hear them go on and on and on. And I just, I literally did like a. Oh, yeah, I need to go this way. And I just walked away. I wasn't even going because oh. I was scared. Because you sniffled so bad that you, like, upset them. I mean, yeah, you you think at some point in the flight, you maybe... I don't I just... They have headphones. How do they hear? <laughs> There's, like, several crying babies on the flight. I'm the guy. I'm the bad guy. Huh. It must have been a pretty bad sniffle. Like, you're overpowered. It must, I mean, babies. I had all sorts of issues going on, so I believe it. But, uh, yeah, I thought I thought I might get, in, get a little mix-up due to allergies. That's crazy. Yeah. Did you think about fighting back? Maybe poking fun of some something about their bodies that they can't help? Yeah. Oh, you know, well, you were over in my side, big boy. So <laughs> if you want to go, we can, <laughs> we can do the thing. I'm sorry. I'm nasally right now. <laughs> he punched me in the nose and I just sneeze. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't hurt. It was all liquid. Yeah. You might as well hit a water bed. Joke's on you. Yeah. I have a strong nose. I've been working it out for three hours on this flight. <laughs> it was all a cartilage. Color just packed by mucus. But I was that by. That was that guy. The the beginning skit of this episode is inspired by me annoying everyone. Where did you go this weekend? L.A. And how do you feel now since you've been there? Oh, I've healed. Sure, prove it. Sniff for me, baby. That you, feel those, clear. you feel those clean those are? Yeah, yeah. Nothing but sunshine and pokey bowls. That reminds me. Have you ever, um, like, trimmed your nose hair? Uh... Yes, I do a little bit of both. I I have maybe uh. Wait, what do you mean both? Well, I do a little both. both where I trim. Okay. Yeah, both nostrils. <laughs> I trim, and then I have maybe a a biweekly session where I for about five minutes just go. Ow! <laughs> yeah, and like one teardrop comes down. Ah! And you rip, and then you sneeze a few times, and you just rip. But it, does it not feel like your nose hairs are, they're they're so regenerative, regenerative, reg 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 <laughs> Can't say the R word. Okay, <laughs> shoot. Uh, they they come. They just keep coming. You could I could pull one today. It's back tomorrow. Huh. It's like bamboo. Oh. <laughs> okay. They, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm thrown off by their regarded. That's they not the are word. Like that. Well, maybe I don't know. Yeah. You have a you have an MBA and I don't. Right. So I I, I fault. We learn those. those words. Um. Yeah. I so biweekly you do the the Yankins knees. 
Mess. Yeah, I'll just notice. I'm like, I can't. This is ridiculous. I got to get rid of them. Probably one month ago, for the first time ever, I was sitting in my car. I looked at myself in the rear view. Rear view. Oh, the R words are tough. <laughs> yeah, Regenerative we're... mirror. And next thing I know, I'm like, oh, like the sun's kind of on me. And I'm kind of looking up. I'm like, those seem too long. Yeah. And I then I start. If like, I can see them. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> But then I start playing the game I'm like, okay, well, how often am I in direct sunlight kind of looking up? Is this okay? True. They don't see me like Not this. Often. So then what Based I do, under skin tone. I go in and I start like kind of pulling down, almost like starting to braid them a little bit. Like I'm starting mm. to twist a few together. Yeah. And I'm like yanking down and I'm like, this feels like it's going below my nose. Yeah. Is this a touch to my brain? I don't, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I shouldn't pull this. And so I went right then and there to Walmart and bought my first ever nose trimmer. Like electric? Electric. Yeah, you put it up there, it's kind of scary. Oh, it tickles. Yeah. Oh, oh. I mean, things that vibrate anyway are already ticklish. And then yeah. and your little sensitive little that's nose. That's They're stimulating, I've heard. Whew. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's where I'm at. Great. <laughs> We're back with Correct Opinions, <laughs> episode 89. We're getting up there. Whew. And Jake's joining me, and uh, we have a good episode. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Roll music, Derek. Correct Opinions. We dance. Jake, Jake dance. It, it, you have to imagine it's because oh. it is in the post edit. Can you feel it? Oh. That's hit the spot. Mm. Everything you say is the correct. Yeah. Nailed it. Um, I'm going crisscrossy apple saucy today because um, we have a sa- saucy episode. I feel like. Thank you, Jake, for joining me. Um, I was tired of talking to myself. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm growing increasingly tired of talking to myself, if I'm being honest with you. I'll be honest. I am honored to be here, and I love that, like, I was the next stop after Brick Wall. It's mm. like, I've been talking to a wall. Exactly. What would be slightly better than that? Yeah, you were... It's good, Jake. He's over here a couple times a well, week. Slightly anyway. worse, because it was option one. <laughs> I was like, I'd rather I mean, I'd rather talk to myself than Jake. But I finally yeah. reached... The wall was getting right. tiresome. No, I... <clears throat> we'll see. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you need to come on as a... Co-host, I don't. I'm kind of tired of it. I don't. We'll see what the the recties want to say. The people can vote. Left if you have something negative to say, because just don't let me see it. I got a tight bond with my. You know, I have a tight recties. I have a tight recti. Yes, we're tight. Yes. and for, you know, for you to try to fit in that would be, you know, it's up to them. I feel it wouldn't like be easy. I shouldn't be entering the realm of recti at least without like several people's consent. Yeah. So we'll wait and hear what they have to say. Yeah. That's <laughs> Yeah, well said. Well said. <laughs> uh, what have you been up to, man? Uh, What'd let's you do this see. Uh, <clears throat> I've been. Oh, I watched. Uh, Bo Burnham has a new. Did Netflix you watch special. it? I watched it last night. How good is it? It is wild. It's like, crazy. Is it in a good way? Yeah, it's something. Is it even more creative and bizarre? Yes. Dude. Really? That's those are two very good words for it. Creative and bizarre. That's his thing. And it's even like, Bo Burnham has always been a very. I, I would say like introspective and kind of like politically driven comedian and yeah. he takes it to a new level it's oh right like, is it very political and just very like like way more social commentary than he's ever done before everything has a, a deeper meaning I mean, everything well but, is, is it a t- is it a ton of just bashing trump no nope. thing okay no it's that's lo- you know that's kind of what a lot of like the late night guys do and it just seems it's like so easy yeah it's like well come on no this is definitely creative but it's a lot of like it's almost like anti-straight white male type humor, okay. I think. Okay, we'll see. There's also a couple things in there where I'm like, this is pretty similar to what Trey and I do. Like, this is good. I mean, it's a very well-done version of what we do. Nice. But there's like at least two examples. So yeah, you need to check it okay, out. I'm and excited. I need to watch it again, too. Because he yeah. uses so many words, I don't even know. I'm like, I gotta... Yeah. Hold on, slow brand. down. Yeah. The brand is the neurotic brainiacs. Love him. But well, that's good. I, I watched several hours of stand-up specials. I was in LA. I... Um, Booked this a couple months ago. I was like, oh, it'll be open and stuff. But, of course, they're still kind of not. So I was out there to meet. I met with several people I just hadn't seen in a long time, which was great. But then a lot of people still work from home. So there's like, no office to even meet people at. Oh. So, like, I got some time. I need to do some writing. And, you know, I was doing getting some good vibes, getting some good stuff down. The vibes were up. And then I was like, you know what? I never, I never sit down and just watch specials because that can be very inspiring. Get some stuff going. So mm-hmm. I just watched th- three hours, three different specials. Oh, no way. This is great. I just walked around listening to that. Huh. <laughs> Who'd you watch slash listen to? Uh, Nate Bergazzi's new special. I hadn't watched yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I um, like him a lot. I watched one of Sebastian Maniscalco's specials. Okay. And I watched Kevin James' recent special. Okay. How would you rank those three? 
Um, honestly, I'd rank. They're all great, and this is my this is my preference of more comedian than like the special in general. Okay. But I, I mean, I'm a huge Maniscalco go. I, I think. I love. I think well, him, you're a Maniscalco girl. Is that Maniscal- what I'm a big Maniscalco girl. Yeah, that's what he calls his fans. Right. Yes, the, the, <laughs> I, I get really ah, when I watch. He's good. By him, then Kevin James, then Bargatze. Right. I, I mean, they're all amazing. It's just though, I'm like watched it to like for an inspiration. Though I feel like James and Maniscalco are more like my personally how I perform. So I like to like get inspired by them. That makes they're, sense. They're a little more. They're a lot very physical and yeah. They're more like theatrical, right? Theatrical. It's probably why I like Nate so much. I like to be much more like deadpan. That's your style, yeah, 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 for sure. But uh, I mean, they're all fantastic. That's fun. Um, so that was fun, man. I, uh, I it's good. To, it feels like it's getting back to normal. I had my first um, air airplane pilot comedian in a long time. Oh, okay. It felt like during COVID, the vibes were really down, so you didn't get that. But you know, I got on the everyone's boarding, and he told maybe no joke thirty little dad joke one-liners that he probably googled in the cockpit what do you what do you call a a pig that robs you a hamburglar you know those oh they weren't not even airplane related no just random jokes no oh what's a cat's favorite cereal mice krispies make sure if you're in the exit row uh (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) infuriating noise canceling and then our landing was Probably the worst landing I've ever had in that airplane. It was like, and people went like, ah! like, you know, frightened the heck out of people. And, you know, he, he gets on there. He's like, that wasn't my fault. That wasn't the plane's fault. That was the asphalt. Oh, gosh. It's like, did you nearly crash us for this punchline? <laughs> Just land the plane and sh- Good gosh. Oh, it was brutal. That's funny, too. Once the, like... Pilot seems like he's maybe not that good at his job. You start to question those jokes a little bit more. Right. So you're like, you know what? Maybe he wasn't joking around yeah. so much. Spent more time in flight school. We did yeah. other landings. Maybe go through your checks and balances. Do your little switches and stuff. Yeah. Quit trying to flick them on and off every now and then. Do I don't you don't know you telling these little jokes to these people? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do in the cockpit? I don't know. How fast is the wind in knots? I don't know. I feel like that's something you do. Yeah. Calculate the knots. Yeah. Look at the knots. He probably had a, has a joke about knots. He probably has a ton of knot jokes. The wind is moving fast today. Knots. <laughs> what do you? What's a perfect airplane joke? A knot knot joke. <laughs> and people are like, what? He's like, that. You know, that one was. It's pretty niche, right there. You'd have to. <laughs> Where do you throw the rooster? Pilots and sailors. When you're done with it, in the cockpit. <laughs> right, guys. Yeah. Pilots out there. Am you I right? It. Am I right? What? <laughs> Hey, what do you call a pilot who uh, changes from one plane to the other? What? Uh, transgender. Because <laughs> we went from one cock to the... <laughs> Boo! Boo! I don't get it, and I'm mad! Get your ticket! <laughs> that is disrespectful. That is horrible. Yeah. we got to change the word cockpit. That feels like one of the words that needs, given everything... The progress and stuff. That one needs to go. There's female pilots. I How do they feel going into that space? Let me throw out a word for you. No more cockpit. The pilot now enters the regarded station. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? Because it's... you. Cause they There's pilots coming in every every flight. New pilot. Yep. Yeah. Regenerate. That makes sense to me. I think it'd be great. <laughs> what, would, what would they call the... What's a cockpit for the female? Like if they wanted to... I don't know. You're married. I'm not. I wouldn't know. I'm gonna defer to you on that one. Okay. Um, egg eggplant. Then it's kind of both. Mmm. How about that? Or wow, just what a we need to eat more of that. <laughs> you ever had an eggplant? I have. They're not. I, I'm a big fan of vegetables. There, it's it's um it's down on the list for me. Okay. Yeah, um, they've been made very popular by the emoji. Yes, the emoji um, did a did a number for them. Yeah. Uh, but it's all good. I uh, I'm gonna stop thinking of female body parts. Yeah, though. that was getting weird. <laughs> I, yeah, sick of the airplane pilot guy. I flew Spirit on the way back. Oh, smart. Have you done that while? Uh, no, I've only flown Spirit once. How was it? Do you remember? Uh, it was one of those things where I felt like I needed to be closer to the Holy Spirit because it was so terrifying mm. the whole time. Yeah. It was a little greyhoundy. <laughs> yes, right. I've also done greyhound just once. Learn my lesson. Uh, but it was it was just the best option. Like it'll be fine and. 
We were zone one on spirit. So I do think that kind of, it helps. If you're zone six spirit, you know, you're, See, you're even... barely getting in the air. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Zone you six know. is like underneath. You don't well, I'm saying they're like now boarding zone one, zone two, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, I hooked us. We were in sixth row of spirit. So not to brag. Not bad. Mm-hmm. I learned this weekend that there's, I forget what it's called. I'm going to butcher probably all this, but if you've like served in the military, you can then have access to like these certain kind of flights, like these military flights where you kind of fly standby, but it's not a normal flight. You can fly like in the cargo space as long as there's nothing dangerous. Like you're not going to be like hugging like a bomb being like, well, can't wait to get to Charleston. Yeah. But it, you know, they said that one time they were on a flight full of mail and they flew to Hawaii for free. But they were in the cargo. They said it's that's like, a problem. Was it a cockpit flight? Only males? That I see where that's confusing. So, and it's even more confusing because it's super loud and there's no windows. So it's like it feels like there's only fans going. And you're like, whoa, uh, cockpit yeah. only fans. Oh, males only. Yeah. <laughs> we're in Hawaii. We're going straight to San Francisco. Yeah. Aloha. Uh, anyway, that's something that exists. You can just hmm. fly in the underbelly of. An I heard airplane. rumors that, like. Regular like Southwest flights will sometimes throw on a few like dead bodies in the bottom. Did you ever hear about this? Like to help transport a body back to somewhere. Whoa. Have you heard this? My That's... grandma had to do that flag. Oh, your grandma flew she Southwest. Flew... Yes. She flew zone After, seven. Yeah, zone seven. That's what they call it. R.I.P. No way. Yeah. That's happened? And so that, that is, that wow, is I, happening? confirmation. So they like as they were kind of there's throwing people's luggage on like here just be careful with it's not like a nice casket right it, they they mistake it for like a someone's golf bags just oh. hurl it in there <laughs> yeet oh man <laughs> i feel like there's a lot i want to you say to, you have I... to get it did you have to get her a baggage check <laughs> she was in like a like large items like you have to like you know like oversized excuse me. items excuse me sir that's that's mine no, no this this is my Titleist clubs. That's my grandma. <laughs> Give it back. This is what you got to mark your bags. They all yeah, look the same. I know. I, we shouldn't have gotten the black casket bag. Everyone has a black bag. <laughs> we should have labeled it. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's wild, man. <laughs> what a way to. I didn't know that. I would like that. I would. I think I'd like to get on Southwest Flip, but, but then you could just kind of release me from up there. See where I and then I I definitely like get buried in that way. Whoa, hold on. What do you say? I'm saying you you once I pass, my family and friends put me oh. on a southwest flight and just kind of open it up, a, you know, in, in like the farm of, of Iowa, and I'll just I'll sink six feet down. <laughs> I <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. Now there's an idea. How do you want to How do you want to be remembered? You die, your body. What do you want? Cremation, I, maybe a little. I want something taxidermy. S- similar to you, but. Uh, mine's kind of a fun casket. And so I do start off casketized in the underbelly of the plane. <clears throat> but yeah, it shoots me out. I'm imagining it kind of like a thunk. That sound out the back. Mm-hmm. Almost like uh, when you put your, like 15 years ago when you wrote a check and you deposited it and you had to put it in the bank and it went, yeah. and went into the bank. That sound, that kind of technology, but shooting me out <clears throat> of the plane. <clears throat> However, the casket stays in. So the casket shoots me out. I fly out of the plane, dead body, but what's up? I have a parachute attached to me. Mm-hmm. Now the farmers in Iowa, <laughs> there's this dead body just floating down to them. Yeah. I have a note attached. And they're like... Treasure hunt. Oh, treasure hunt. This is the first like, minute of 30 minutes. Thank I God we need a new scarecrow. <laughs> it's just you floating down there. Treasure hunt. Treasure hunt. That leads. Leads to uh, my estranged grandson who doesn't know where I buried the riches. Mm. If you have me back next week, I'll tell you part two of my death story. Wow. Right? That's just part one of what That's happens great. to me. It's called The Scarecrow in Iowa. Uh, speaking of, I made a scalco in one of his bits. He was like, we went to go to the to the cemetery to commemorate my mother-in-law who had passed. Or I'm sorry, the, the father-in-law had passed and they'd already bought the plots for him and her. But it had been a while and she had remarried. So he's like, so does she still go? Oh. <laughs> That's a hilarious thought. He was like, yeah, I just, like, oh. you can't buy your plots too early. I yeah. wouldn't. It's like a matching tattoo. It's like, yeah. you better be pretty confident right. if you're going to get matching tattoos. Mm-hmm. That's a whole next level. Yeah. I bet there's some couples out there who got matching plots and then divorced. Then what? They just got to put like a 
put a retaining wall in between them or something. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? You separate them. You try to sell it. Maybe it worked out for him. Mm. Buy low, sell high. That's man. What are you get in the plot business? <laughs> the plot game. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, idea. Uh-huh. I'll tell you next episode. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm just withhold everything. Uh, we start a cemetery business. But most cemeteries, what, it's very orderly. You know, you have yeah. these all in a row. I'm thinking it's all crazy. Who knows where you're going to be? We call it scatter plot. Scatter plot. Yeah, it's for the math people out there to be buried. And you you go to, you're like, hey, hello, I'd like to, do you know where Greta Triplet is? I'd like to pay my respects. Like, no, you got to, that's part of the fun. That's what's so fun about the scatter plot. Da, 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 da. 16 acres for you yeah. to look through. You just got to find her. <laughs> you got to find everywhere. her. You look at everywhere. You're looking everywhere. That sounds, yeah. I think it'd be fun. We need to add a little more fun to the cemetery because it's not a fun place. It's not. <clears throat> Maybe a bar there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe a dispensary. Ooh. Tombstoned. <laughs> Tombstoned. <laughs> right? It's legalized, people. Don't come at me. Yeah. It's called like, <clears throat> yeah, it's called Tombstone. And the tagline is like, if you're coming here for someone six feet deep, why don't you get higher than they are yeah the yeah or, yeah the the liquor store could be like six feet under the influence Ooh, dang you come you came ready with these dang dude dude we're on to something <laughs> Trey six, Drake's cemetery of fun six feet under the influence <clears throat> there could be you know be like a deli or something i think uh yeah you know. just a really lot of, a lot of out of touch jokes too there's mm-hmm. like a there's a comedian performing at all times yeah. All right, we've got the uh, the bar over here. In the meantime, we're going to honor um, Robert. He, he died doing what he loved. Yeah, please uh, be a good crowd. I don't want to come back and tell my friends that I embalmed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now, uh, I know you're thinking. Sorry about your loss. Sorry about your loss. <laughs> the idea of a bar in a cemetery. <clears throat> I don't know. Sounds a little whiskey. <laughs> Come Sorry on, about it's your o- loss. It's okay to laugh, guys. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to laugh. You'll see him again. <laughs> <laughs> this is where, yeah. it could be fun. It's great. It's a brilliant idea. <laughs> Whew. But yeah, I can't. I don't care where my body ends up. This, yeah. I, uh, what are caskets? I learned caskets funerals all the thousands of dollars. Really? It's unreal. Yeah, I think when you get older, don't you start to like pick out your own casket? Isn't that a thing? That is a thing for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, I'm like mm. I'm not it's there really yet. More, but yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I haven't thought about it yet. I don't even know if it's about picking out your casket as much as it is like I'm 86. I haven't made a decision for myself in six years. I'm picking out the casket. Yeah, like, probably. I, I want this. this I've is... been eating prune juice yeah. and applesauce. She so. won't let me get a new recliner, so <laughs> might as well get be comfy. After life, I want the I want the white oak casket and i want mm-hmm. fake leather on the inside yep i love learning new stuff you guys know i'm always trying to get better at you know content or, or whatever it's like video editing whatever it is and skillshare is an amazing online community community where you can do just that they have thousands of courses from uh, productivity to creativity uh editing uh photography list goes on uh they have so much to explore they have real projects you have real projects to create and the, with the support of fellow creative skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth of course i have checked out it's called youtube success script shoot and edit uh it's taught by marquise brownlee he's a big time youtuber if you don't know him and uh i mean you know even me i'm a youtuber but i can get better classes like that they have stuff for literally anyone not just youtubers trust me you guys would love it from lifestyle creative writing animation fine art they have something for everybody um and you guys can if they've just eventual advance you towards your achievable goal there's nothing better than getting Better, right? Accomplishing growth is extremely satisfying. So do something today that you couldn't do yesterday. Come on. It's affordable. Annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So what are you waiting for? For my people, I got an offer for you. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash Trey and get a free trial of premium membership. That's Skillshare.com slash Trey. Support the show. Skillshare.com slash Trey. What's your thoughts on the open casket funerals? Been a few of those. It was tough. I mean, I saw a couple when I was pretty young and that's kind of, shocking uh, yeah you're kind of like oh my it's just yeah it's kind of hard to wrap your head around anyway but yeah i don't know i haven't thought that much of it just maybe maybe kind of animate me a little bit like kind of like a chuck e cheese band <laughs> come on in to trey's funeral and just be like oh, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> just doing this the whole time have you seen the movie mr deeds 
Oh, yeah. My first ever PG-13 movie. Oh, I'm glad I, I asked. forget it. Yeah. <laughs> I watched it in a, the back of a minivan. Little Who's van? nine-inch TV. Uh, I was a kid. It was Andy's mom's car. Oh, were you in the, in the Toy Story movie? No. <laughs> Andy, man. Andy's you don't, you don't come, across, come across a lot of Andy's. I don't think he goes by Andy anymore. But. I met a dog yesterday named Andy, and that seemed yeah. to fit him better than a person. Yeah. I'm working... I was working on a new bit of like my basketball career and how, you know, I graduated from like Andy to DeAndre and that's when things got different, but that's a real, those were real. Andy, like as far as teammates go. Yeah. Andy couldn't, literally couldn't dribble the basketball and yeah. DeAndre was six, nine. So and he probably could. It got different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, and Mr. Deeds, I want you to do something like that where he, he died like climbing Mount Everest and he's like still frozen solid at the, uh, funeral and oh yeah i was like hey where i'm from we think it's important in the morning process to see the dead body so let's open it up and then he pops oh, yeah. out of out there up. like a jack-in-the-box that's thing. a great like, one too oh yeah <laughs> it just freaks everyone that's out. what you we can do need. something like that at your funeral i like that <laughs> i like that um so let's talk about this i was in la we had i mean half our meals we had some kind of mexican food you know it's popular over there the cool. kind of socal great stuff <clears throat> and los angeles it makes but sense. what i even that's the whether it's authentic Mexican or even the Americanized Mexican, they love to put the menu items in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's, and I feel like no waiter ever gives you. I'm sure they get tired of it, but I'm like, I want the, irregado mingota. You know, I'm like pointing to. And he's just like, yeah, man. I'm like, what? Are, what am I supposed to? I feel weird just going. I'll have the imigato mingota. Like if that doesn't feel, you know, I don't want to. Anyone saying I'm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to appropriate or anything like that. That's what I was going to ask. It's like, what's more frustrating? Like a super authentic menu at like a not authentic place or the person, always a white guy, who's like, uh, speaks super normal. Yes. I was thinking we'll take somebody, uh, pollo enchiladas, uh, con queso, and then like a Dr. Pepper. Like mm-hmm. the guy who orders like right. that is so annoying. Dr. Pepper. <laughs> And Coca Cola, Pepsi, Pepsi. It's just like everything else is super normal until it's time to talk to the waiter. Hola, papi. Me gusta uh, el queso. Yeah. I, I, so I had my big issue. This happened to me twice out there. Maybe it's an LA thing where I was like corrected. I was like, what? So I was like, oh yeah, to drink I'll have the mediando del chongo i mean it was this lo- it was like three long words like medicando del chongo i'm like and he goes what what what's that and i point to it like this he's like oh okay <laughs> like what i don't speak spanish i'm trying my best or when these places or even not even spanish when they just like do a complicated t- like this one drink was called a v i l a apostrophe s i guess that's someone's name okay air h e i r a V I L A apostrophe S H E I R. How would you how would you order that? I would say I would like to order Avila's Air. Okay, well you got it right. <laughs> I, I said I'll have Avila's Air. She goes Avila's Air. I go don't correct me. <laughs> you don't you know what? That's like when you're just in a conversation when you you say like, you know if if someone's be like yeah you know he's obviously mischievous you know mischievous. <laughs> just you know I, I know what you, you meant too. <laughs> Oh, it, it take me I, like and Katie's like you need you shouldn't get so upset at stuff like that. I'm literally jotting it down like talking for this little podcast. <laughs> She's like you shouldn't get so aggravated. It's aggravated. It's Katie. aggravated. <laughs> Say it right. Katie is the queen of mispronounced words. Well, I, I do. I'm pot calling the kettle because I do get frustrated when people mispronounce. Easy. Katie's the queen of this. I heard her say ricochet the other day. Yeah, that's Ron Desvus. No, that was yeah, a tough one. That one was tough. <laughs> She's like, don't. Don't die cooks bad for you. It has ass part of me in it. <laughs> like Katie. And she, you know, she'll be like, do you want some orange juice? What's, what's an orange? Ar- are you saying Arnold Palmer? Uh, like Arnold Ar- juice? There's a lot, man. Orange juice? A lot of people. I, I noticed that when people, I can't do it. I remember we were talking to you the other day. We we're like, remember that old like Disney movie about the Native American woman? And she was like, oh, Pochahontas. Yes. We're like, Katie, do you not know how to... Do not say that. Pochahontas? Yeah. That's so far off. Yeah, that don't... mm -mm. She's not good with Native Americans. I remember we asked her about Lewis and Clark, and she was like, oh, Sacagawe. 
Mm -hmm. like, Katie, you got to no, learn this. You've got to learn that the Native Americans, <laughs> she still thinks I'm from Oklahoma. <laughs> I, I mean, she's got to learn. Yeah, it's brutal. Eventually. Uh, sp speaking of that, we were, we were hanging out. We were one of, with one of her friends out to eat. You know, and Katie, as I think a lot of white girls are, the very you know they like to be very into the health, health and wellness stuff you're eating, right? Like you, know, you guys like me, Jake, Derek, good old boys, just give me something to eat. Yep, eat, eat, eat it up. So she brings up, she's like, I was actually reading up on something that um, sparkling waters, sparkling waters, they have a lot of uh, these things called polyphosphate clostrates in them, mm. and they're really bad for you. I was just immediately, I just went, stop, <laughs> stop, stop. It's spark. I, I'm so proud of myself. I can drink a sparkling water and enjoy it. Yeah. It just, I mean, let's be honest. It's, it's way better things to drink. So you're going to take that from me? I'm just sick of it. I said, don't bring this up again. It, it, yeah. <laughs> don't, just don't bring this up don't, again. I would rather you talk about Pochahontas again. Yeah. Rather, let's I mean, talk about I just her. can't. <laughs> Even though it's true, just stop. <laughs> oh. so I did this recently, not with like healthy stuff, but I was talking about how Tom Hanks is just the best. He's the most mm -hmm. beloved. Done, done no wrong. And true. So it's like, you know, he actually has, uh, back in the 80s, Tom Hanks got in trouble. I said, I don't, yep, stop. I don't want to know about it. Stop. If it was bad enough, I would have heard about it. I don't care. He, I don't want to know what he did. He conceived Chet Hanks. <laughs> yeah. Actually. That's, what... that's the big black eye in his family. Yeah, I kind of His is. oldest son. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's his youngest, whatever. Chet. Was, I don't know. Chet. Chet. He named him Chet. That was his <clears throat> That was, miscue. yeah. That, that probably was a good old one. Um, when you were asking about Abiel Azair. Uh, it reminded me, I had trouble reading a word today, Trey, that was in English. And I want to mm. see if I am alone in this. Okay, give it to me. <clears throat> Here is the word. Oh, I'm afraid it's not going to trip you up. Okay. Like an idiot. Okay, can you, are you ready to imagine this? Mm. S-E-E-S-A-W-E-D. All right, good, all right, good. S-E-E-S-A-W-E-D. Oh, yeah. Seesawed. There you go. You got it quicker than I did. <laughs> I was like seaweeded. Yeah, I know. Cis, cis. Like your, so. your mind sees seaweed. Because you see like S-E-A in there, and then you see W-E-D. It's like seaweed. Okay, it's not seaweed. Sesaweed. Okay, it's not sesaweed. What are you reading with Sesaweed. where the word seesaw is happening? The sentence was like... I was reading Robinson Crusoe. I was reading, yeah, The Last Adventure. <laughs> it was uh, the crypto uh, market has seesawed moderately yeah oh i i don't know as much crypto as i thought <laughs> I never, what does sesawed mean in I financial terms be buying sesawed yeah to the moon sesawed <sighs> sesawed okay, come on buy it sesawed don't sell sesawed was that was was that pocahontas sister <laughs> i need a crap I can't be how i pronounce it you need a part two with sesawed all the colors of the sesawed oh <laughs> sea of all the colors <laughs> Of the Sesawin. Sacagawea Indian Girl. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Maybe that was just so... What are you that was a school musical. That's not a song everyone knows? <laughs> I thought you just said that out of nowhere. No. Is that a song everyone knows or no? I've never heard of that. Sacagawea Indian Girl. A little girl, a little white girl sang around this dancing. This is not there. real. This is a real song. It's, you know, they're probably not doing that produ production any longer. <laughs> but that was little... Little Lauren probably did that one in, in 1999. Actually, I'm remembering it now. At Back when they were had this name, at halftime of the Washington Redskins game, instead of God Bless America, someone mm -hmm. would just come out and sing that yeah. song. And now, Sacagawea. <laughs> no, no, stop, 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 stop. Sacagawea. <laughs> in hindsight, dude, I was way too shy to ever do any like theatrical production as a kid. And as a in '90s in Oklahoma, I'm pretty glad I didn't get the lead in any of these. Who knows what we were doing? Because it was it was a lot about Native Americans, a lot of cowboys and Indians. Yeah, type content. Yeah, that's old Sesawed. Yeah, he's gonna be big someday. <laughs> he is. He's a star. <laughs> I tell you. Oh my gosh. What interferes with your happiness? Um, something preventing you from achieving your goals? Uh, besides being maybe it's being lazy bum like me, but but more importantly. Maybe you have anxiety, maybe you have stress like me. Maybe you, maybe you have some other things you're dealing with. Well, BetterHelp can help. They'll put you in a uh, safe and private online environment with a therapist. It's convenient. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. Uh, it's really a great tool. I, you know, I've had therapy before. I'm a, I'm a big fan. So I think you guys would love BetterHelp. My rec days, you'll love it. In fact, so many people have loved it. BetterHelp's recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. This is not just like a crisis line. It, it's not just self-help. It's, it's truly professional counseling. 
done securely online. You don't have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. Uh, they're committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than tra traditional offline counseling. Uh, I mean, what, what else? the list goes on, right? It's available worldwide and you can find the expertise you need. You know, they cover anxiety and, and depression and trauma and sleep issues and anger issues and the list goes on. I love BetterHelp. You're going to love it too. I want you to start living a happier life. So come on, as a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash correct. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash correct. Uh, okay, someone I want to talk about. Logan Paul, Floyd Money Mayweather, this Sunday. Yes, Logan Paul, different than Jake Paul, because I think a lot of people, a lot of my buddies don't understand that. Two different humans. YouTuber is boxing. Floyd Mayweather, arguably the best boxer of all time. He's 50-0. and 0. This weekend. Um, prediction? More context, Logan Paul is in his 20s. He's 6'4", 200 pounds, something like that. And Floyd Mayweather is like 5'8", 150. Yeah. So he's got like six inches. 43 years old. 70 pounds on him. There's an 18-year age difference. No, what's crazy? I did see Logan Paul's reach. Oh, never mind. Okay, well, let's see what you're <laughs> Logan Paul's reach advantage is maybe two inches. Oh, no way. That's what's crazy about the, these are t these top boxers. Have they inches. have a, a reach that is so like unique to their size. Two inches. Yeah. Wow. Good for Like him. he has, like I think, I think it was like 74 or something crazy. So I, I think... I think a, a normal thing is, so I'm like 6'1". So what is that? Math, math. So I'm like 73 inches tall. Nice. Yes? And I think, I think I've mentioned before, I'm, your, your reach is typically about your height. It should be. Like normal person. Yeah. So I have, a, I think Floyd Weather's like 5'8 and has the reach of like a 6'2 guy. Wow. <clears throat> okay. That's a fun fact. I didn't yeah. know that. Sorry. I just, I, our toes just touched. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to bring my toe back. Which is just you're like one of the worst feelings i've ever felt with another like, man floyd floyd's reach is pretty long yeah but my reach is not so bad either and his toes aren't quite as nimble as mine <laughs> you feel that uh i learned today that floyd uh, mayweather is a grandfather okay logan paul's fighting a grandpa oh nice yeah floyd's daughter recently had a kid wow good for him yeah 18 years age difference he's fighting a grandpa and i mean it is like floyd mayweather mayweather is probably gonna win but there is like the probably like he's i he's gonna win let me put it i've had this i had this analogy probably i had this analogy because i we obviously know nothing about boxing yeah but let's take let's say um i think it's similar where logan logan paul grew up like wrestling and doing some kind of combat sports so i whatever so let's say you and i we grew up playing some basketball okay in the great in the realm of the entire country we're above average basketball players yeah agreed but you know nowhere near great and it's, I, I truly think it's something if like, I'm currently 28 and let's say who, who's a wonderful basketball player who's like in their late forties, maybe Carl Malone. He's okay. probably a little older than that. Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller. Okay. Um, or even Muggsy Bogues. Okay. Cause I have a foot on him. <laughs> They'd say like Muggsy Bogues who played in the NBA for like 10 years. He's got, I'm, he's, I'm bigger than him, but he's 15 years older. We're going to play one-on-one. -on -one. See who wins. This is a good analogy. I, you see, you're like, oh, maybe that's kind of interesting, dude. He would beat the heck out of me if he's like, if he's still. Yeah, I don't have a. And shot. the assumption is he's still in shape and like playing regularly. Yeah, he's just he's a professional. That's a good analogy. Well, that's not even the best analogy because he's not one of the greatest basketball players of all time. <laughs> yeah, like literally, if I play, okay, let's say Michael Jordan, he's like literally 57. He would still beat me in one on one right now. But what if you had three years to train, Trey? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Like, it becomes kind of interesting in your head, but still no. You can convince yourself that he has a chance, Ooh. that Logan Paul has a chance, but I would be very, very okay. shocked. Like, what are the betting odds? Like, you have a lot of money oh, to be made I think if you right, bet Yeah, it's not. I think right now you bet um, 1500 bucks to win 100 on Floyd. No way. Yeah. Okay. Did you see the, like, mini doc that Showtime came out with? No. It was, like, on YouTube trending. It's just, uh, Showtime's the one the people who are like selling fights. They did okay. a 30 minute documentary and it's interesting. Like it'll go straight from like Logan Paul fighting montage, like how hard he's been training for three years. And then Floyd Mayweather is like, yo, you want to see 25 in my cars? Yeah. And he's just, is this on like, the shrunk. beach? This purse What's costs $400,000. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know why I have this. Yeah. It is crazy how wealthy he is. It really is. I mean, he made, he had, I think he made half his money on the uh, McGregor fight. Yeah. That one was just so outrageous. 
Yeah, he's going to make like half a billion dollars from like his last three flights. Yeah. Fights. Cockpit. Not flights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. Not selling that. Yeah. Yeah. He's not. Well, probably not his last three. His last three public fights. He does like to hit women in the privacy of his own. That's a thing, right? <laughs> no, yeah, he has a history. Which he is funny. Is. We're like, this guy's awesome. Like, well. They each have their skeletons in the closet. It's all good. It's all good. Not really. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> Logan I mean, films yeah. the skeletons. Floyd it's turns fine. them into one. They've moved past it, I believe. It's all good. It's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a great fight. Let's talk about something else in the news right now. Olivia Rodrigo. Uh... I'll say it. I think I'm going to do whatever it takes to get dumped in a really tragic way so I can just feel some of what Olivia Rodrigo is feeling right now. I want to yeah. feel it. I want to feel it. Good for you. Like a dang sociopath. She calling her ex a sociopath? Yeah. Ooh. See, and I, I'm singing right along to it. I love the music, but I can't. I don't feel it. Mm. I want to feel it. That's true. Is the whole Is all the music just screaming about a bad boy uh it's not always screaming but yeah it's an entire album about how this dude uh broke her heart and i've done a little deep dive i could tell you everything about it but i'm not going to okay is she like a teenager i think she's 17 that's great she's like writing this song she's in there later it's about like keegan who lives in the suburbs and it's like <laughs> literally just has armpit hair now <clears throat> yeah that's me on the radio captivating america i uh, blew her off to play more Fortnite. she was pissed she did not like that. Yeah. She like went and wrote a whole album and she break, broke records. Like the whole thing. <laughs> she asked me if she could take me to prom and I told her, yeah, if I don't have anything better to do. And she yeah. like freaked out. Yeah. About that. It was Sadie Hawkins. She had asked me and I said no. And anyway, now it's like deja vu and she has her driver's license and good for you. I don't know. I wasn't yeah. paying attention. I don't have the album downloaded. I don't care. I imagine being the guy who dumped her though. He's probably like, yeah, all his buddies like that Olivia girl's crazy. And now she's... She's a gazillionaire. Like, like hmm, I should have. Maybe she was. Maybe that game of Fortnite wasn't worth it. <laughs> nah, Olivia. Olivia, you still drive you back? You still drive through the suburbs? Or? Yeah, come over to my parents' house. <laughs> you have? Oh, you bought your own multi-million dollar house? Oh. Okay. Oh. Well, I can just come over. No. Floyd Mayweather. You, well, you want to go over? to prom? Yeah, <laughs> she's done with prom, probably. Right. I don't think she's going to that. Do you think? Surely this is dying. I feel like a lot of kids stars, they still had to like do school and stuff. She yeah. doesn't need to do school. Like I think Charlie D'Amelio is still trying to do like online school. Stop. Yeah. You don't learn anything anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're, you're, you're already making a bunch of money. You, you don't need to memorize. I mean, what do you, at yeah, that scientific age? Scientific method. Periodic table. Observation. Hypothesis. That's all I remember. Ooh. But those are the first two. Conclusion. And that was at some point. I don't know where. <laughs> Observation hypothesis. Testing. Questions. Qu question. That's good. Independent variable. Regenerative. <laughs> independent variable. Yeah. A dependent variable control group. Dependent variable. Dependent variable. Outlier. I'm just saying things. <laughs> Outliers. <laughs> Scatter plot. Tipping point. Sure. Break even point. <laughs> Dave, I'm just naming the titles of Malcolm Gladwell's books. <laughs> Tipping point. David and Goliath. <laughs> the outliers uh yeah anyway charlie d'amelio uh does she listen i think she does That's probably she, probably if you're listening hey you're good you just yeah you're you just learn skills in high school you don't need to learn like i don't know igneous sedimentary and metamorphic are the three different parts of rock you don't need to know that no. set up something about sediment was a type of sediment limestone was a type of like rocks or something Remember these? Limestone. <laughs> sediment. Hold on. Yeah, just set them. Oh, I thought those were clouds. <laughs> what did you say? Igni ignominious. Igni I think you're having a stroke. Ma magnanimous. <laughs> Igneous. Sea sedimentary. Sea seaweed. <laughs> Sesawed. And metamorphic. I just are the, saying that. Are the Native I, American tribes is, isn't there of Oklahoma. <laughs> Limestone is rock, though. You were, yeah. You knew that. That's rock. You, you forgot. <laughs> Uh, you nailed gra it. Granite. <laughs> Quartz is in there. Quartz. Freaking lava yeah. turns into rock. Dude, did you ever you're, think You're that? an idiot. <laughs> when I was on Hawaii, or when I was in Hawaii, I was like, this is This is like, a huge rock. This is like lava, I think. Like hardened lava. This is yeah. a volcano. This is cool. That's Yeah, that's what we're on right now. 
I don't know. We're are, is is all solid matter lava? Are we lava? I'm gonna lava boy. Is that what it's for? <laughs> Next time a kid wants to play floor is lava with me, I'm gonna go into this explanation. Yeah. Eh, th- 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 you actually already lost. You yeah, see, you it's see, all lava. If you go back billions of years, <laughs> floor is lava. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, it's actually not just a game. It it's always. And lava. by the way, idiot, the word you're looking for is magma. <laughs> go to bed. Also, it's pronounced seesaw. All if, right. You knew that if you went to online school, Charlie. You wouldn't know the difference. It was magma and lava are different. Yes, I think magma was if you, if you're on the magma is if you're below the Mason Dixon line. Oh wait, you had magma's, a different definition. Oh, below. What was yours? <laughs> magma. Yes, I'm sorry. I th- I was confusing magma with the um, contraceptive. <laughs> oh, I'm out of control, man. <laughs> Too much time in LA. I go get back to my roots. Yeah, I. <laughs> I mean, different strokes for different folks. I just, I just use lavas, but mm-hmm. you know, yeah, whatever works. Yeah, magma. <laughs> That's pretty good, Trey. That's pretty good. <laughs> South of the Mason Dixon. Where's the Mason Dixon line? I, think, I don't have, a, I don't, I don't have a clue. I don't know. I know it runs east west. It's like you know, like there's Mississippi and Mason Dixon. It's just fun to say stuff like that, like west of the Mississippi. Like yeah. back where 150 years ago, south of the Mason Dixon, <laughs> right in the smack dab of the Louisiana Purchase. <laughs> Did you know that Tom or Jefferson bought that for a penny? I hate when people do those. You ever heard of inflation? They're yeah. like, well, bread back in the day, bread cost. No, it costs the same. Yeah, <laughs> it's just relative. It, it, it goes on an even plane. Can you believe if the dollar <laughs> back in the day, Louisiana land only cost a penny. That's yeah. like what they uh, today's penny is what it costs. No, it's like man, I should have. Doesn't make sense. If I was smart twenty years ago, I would have bought gas. I would have bought land. I would have bought yeah. more houses. I should have stocked up on milk. Yeah, milk Frozen even. It. Um, I mean, I'd be profan. I'd be seeing the prices. I mean, I should have mm. bought all this stuff twenty years ago. <laughs> Trying to explain that to someone, be like, dude. Yeah, <laughs> it's all gone up. It's yeah. never gonna stop. It's never gonna stop. That is that is interesting because anyway, I'll just have the enchiladas. Yeah, except gas. I remember when I was 16, learned to drive, had to pay my own gas. It was like $4 a gallon. That was, that right was a when, wild time. Yeah, when we that were. It was tough out there for a, it was. for a teen. Yeah. My parents had to finally start paying for my gas because I went to college like 30 miles away. I was like, I mean, it literally cost me $15 to come home. So I can't do that. <laughs> it was nice. Yeah, every time I went home for college, here's some money for gas. Right. All right. Here you go, kiddo. Here you go, kiddo. That was, ever, that was the only thing that's different. What was has anything got more expensive? Has anything not gotten expensive? Any, what like is there something in our life twenty years ago was vastly cheaper than it is right now? Inflation. Uh, when Napster was out, songs were pretty cheap. Songs were free there for like a year. That was pretty great. Right, but that's even gotten cheaper because you used to buy music or illegally download it. Yeah. So we all LimeWire, LimeStone. <laughs> You use limestone if you want rock music, if you want rock and roll. Mm. Oh, pun. Put that yeah. in the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> That's going into business plan. Yeah. There's got to be something. I'll tell you, this isn't what you're asking at all, but it's, yeah, it's not. I don't know about the price, but the technology of an umbrella, can we change it? Umbrellas don't work, and they've nope. been the same since the beginning of time. The technology Ooh. of an umbrella has never changed. We got to think of it something hasn't. to keep the rain off of me better than an umbrella. I know. I, I've always wanted those umbrella hats. Sure. That Bill Murray, Murray used to wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are cool. I think it is more. It works great. It works great. <clears throat> but what? A, yeah. What's the alternative? Maybe something that can like repel water or bounce it off. A trampoline umbrella. I don't trampoline. Know. Something with like air, like it shoots air out. To... Mm, yeah. Puts you in a little force field. Yeah. Of dryness. Yeah. Ooh. Maybe uh, you know, or something like hydrophobic paint I can cover myself in. Like a clear coat? That would be easier. That would be, yeah. that would be nice. Yeah, I would do that. I would do I'm that. I'm trying to think of practical solutions. You exactly. Know? Hydrophobic paint is my number Umbrella, one. Umbrella, it's not it's, a very masculine thing to whip out. It's tough. I, I feel like I might as well be holding a purse when I have an umbrella yeah. out. Yeah. And the only one I have is like a mini one. So I feel it's particularly dainty. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. You know, something about being a man, you got to be fine getting a little wet. You know, the trenches. Yes, trench foot. 
Charlie D'Amelio doesn't know because she hasn't yeah. got to that part in history class. But it's a thing in World War One. Trench warfare. Look it up, Charlie. Yeah. What's the? I wanted to say GERD, but that is a different problem. Gout. 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 Yes. Never. Never had gout. Do have GERD. <laughs> but her gout is no fun. Uh, yeah. I think. What does they say? You get the gout, it'll make you want to pout. Mm-hmm. So don't get it. Right. I actually don't know what gout is. Is it like in your toes? It's something to do with getting wet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't... It's something. It's something in there. Uh. I really don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay. What? Ooh, I have something else I want to talk about. I saw. You ever? You ever get on Facebook? Yes. Hi, if you're watching this. Or or any social media, and you see, the the comment, the people in the comments who love to just go to war in the comments, or they take time on this random post to leave like the, a really well thought out explanation of their thoughts and opinions. You're yeah. like, what? Do you have a job? What are you doing? Yeah. I saw in re- I saw this happen in real life. I was in line for coffee at the airport. This guy was standing in front of me, and I just straight up looked on his phone. I love doing that. I just uh, look at your phone and see what you're doing. And he was, I mean, he would he would pause. He would look up. He'd go back and type up a little another paragraph, and he'd. And it was something to do with Israel Palestine, which. No, really. Just want to like we've I think we've said this on the Patreon. Join our Patreon, trykinocom slash Patreon. Uh, we are an anti-war podcast. We don't like it. We don't like it. But he's I don't know what he was saying because he he was going on and on like. There must be done, and it was very. He was trying to be very articulate, and poetic. He's really, like, you know, they're they're oppressing so many people, hmm. people of all sorts of beliefs and and sexual identities. And we need to. And he just going on and on, and he just would pause, and he would keep going. <laughs> and he finally pressed post, and I could tell it was a just a random like news article with like a bunch of shares and comments. He so just he, he like, worked on that for like five minutes in line. He was resharing an article to his Facebook with his own. No, thoughts. he was commenting <clears throat> oh, in the comment comment. section. In oh, the wow. comment section, yes. He saw it in real Not life. sharing it to his friends in the comment section. He was joining the conversation. And I was just like, wow, I never I've never known anyone or seen it happen. Dude, that's great. And you're gonna love there's a part <clears throat> in Bo Burnham's special. At the end he goes, And and why does it have to be a cockpit? <laughs> <laughs> Do that in there. Also, Cisawed? <laughs> Pronounce Hey Siri. Hey Siri. <laughs> Pronounce Cisawed. Am I getting that right? <laughs> no, in Bo Burnham's special, he it has this little bitty part where he's like, Can people just shut up about anything? We've gotten yeah. to this point where everyone feels like they need to be talking about how they're feeling at all times about everything. Just shut up. <laughs> yeah. So, that is a great point. I yeah. just you just don't you don't you don't have to have an opinion on everything. Yeah. I'm a big fan of that. I feel oh. Yeah. I don't know. I don't care. You ask me how I want to if I how I feel about cremated or open caskets, like I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I, I'm on a podcast called Correct Opinions, and I still don't have an opinion. Yeah, that's how little I care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect, perfect co-host. Jeez, uh, no. <laughs> gonna go back to the wall. No, I uh, yeah saw that in real life. Thought it was great. That is special. Mm-hmm. Should we do one of our segments from when we used? Let's do it. Yeah. We uh we we've, we've been doing a weekly podcast on my Patreon, so go check that out. We have a great time. And one of my favorite second segments is spoken word up <laughs> where, uh, we, you know, okay. I'm going to give Jake a word and he is to, uh, turn that into a beautiful poem, if you will, or if not spoken word, because we hear, we love to, you know, we love to give our thoughts and opinions out, but we want to do it kind of poetically. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, with that being said, I'll get some nice, Let's see. What are you going to type in today? Uh, uh, some nice, what's the word I'm looking for? Appropriate music. Okay. And, okay, I'm looking for, the word I want you to make a poem about is. Got inspiring, royalty-free music. Yeah, that's right. Is. is it's got to be cockpit. Oh, I was going to give you cockpit. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, it's cockpit, and please enjoy. Oh, YouTube gives us two ads these days. Thanks, YouTube. Thank you guys for coming. This is my first time uh, doing spoken words, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> You're accepted here. Thank you. Be yourself. Thank you. Take your clothes off. What? Sorry, I didn't. Okay. <clears throat> Today, we gather and listen to me on microphone Mm. and afterwards you'll drive maybe even fly home Mm. where's home there once was a time 
so high in the air for all these things happened and it gave me a scare. Uh. You see, we had this pilot. Wave beats music. <laughs> you had to snap over that. <laughs> no, whatever. We see, you see, we had this pilot and he was awfully quiet. I went in, I was kind of itching and I could tell that my pilot was kind of a chicken. Aren't we all? He was a scared chicken. He didn't want to fly it. And I think that's why they call it the flight cockpit. Because we're all scared to do our mm, jobs. Yes, yes. We're all scared to measure the wind in knots. Yes. But tomorrow, nay, today is the day you can take control. So whatever it is, snatch it, grab it, lick it, bop it. Take control of the game of your life. Flip the switches. Wave beats music. <laughs> Twist it, pull it, grab it. We're in the cockpit of life. Yes! Guys, I'm selling stickers in the back if you'd love to come see me here. $2.99. And please listen to my podcast. It's called Correct Opinions. Thank you, you guys so much. Your for words are valued story. here. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you for that. Bop it. I don't know. Yeah. Incorporated that back to the air, airline switches. Well, Dude, that. It's fun, but it does. It's a cockpit. Wow. Do it again, but uh, better. Cockpit. Okay, that was good. Um, Trey, your word for spoken word today is Italian food. My word. <laughs> your single word is Italian food. Wave beats music. Mm. Can we get some snaps, you guys? Thank you. Oh, what's that tummy? Are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I want something yummy. Something so delicious inside me. Maybe Italian food. Maybe fazolis. <laughs> it's quick and easy. It's delicious. It's fast. Let's go get those breadsticks. Make memories that last. Mm. Cause when I'm so hungry, my boy wants to eat. Appreciate the music. Shout out Wave Beats. <laughs> <laughs> Italian food, Italian food. Oh, that's a spicy meatball, isn't it? The only thing impossible <laughs> is to eat enough to fill up my cockpit. <laughs> Luigi. Mario, Luigi, other Italian plumbers. <laughs> I'm going to need their help because dairy clogs my pipes. <laughs> Italian food. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good nuggets, Italian nuggets in there. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Woo! Where are we at? Okay. Uh, that's a sweet, sweet episode there. Thank you, Jake, for coming on. Let us know Thanks if Recti's, if he deserves to be in, in a Recti, man. I'll do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Anything. Thank you. Anything. Um, we, once again, always appreciate y'all listening. We'll talk to you next week. Vibes are up. Peace. Correct opinion.